brand over the past few years, I think probably as it has with a lot of brands. Um, so we, we try to identify who as an influencer is out there that in a very authentic way can help tell our brand story. I think the authenticity of who our influencers are um, and their, their vibe, their message, like their followers and so forth. So picking the, the right influencers and who would like to work with us as well is really important. Um, so this year we, we partnered with Shayna and uh, her mom, who's also a thriver. I don't think too much from Shayna about her um, stories. But we really wanted to think about like how could we give our followers and our customers a little bit of a, a deeper reasoning about why, why BCRF. So uh, Shana created some really great content for us this year, went behind the scenes at the BCRF office, um, went to uh, meet with the researchers that we fund. That was really cool, right? That was really cool. Um, we actually took uh, one of our panelists from last year to a store, went shopping with her. Um, we had some great shots of you and your mom in our merchandise. Like, my mom is a character. <laughs> so I think the, the, again, 360 very integrated thinking about it is we were able to basically partner with you and showcase our merchandise and also showcase our partnership with BCRF all at the same time. So it was a win-win-win in terms of, you know, what we, how can we maximize the impact again of, of an influencer uh, marketing strategy? But I, I think for, for that, I mean, so background, my mom at this point, I think is seven or eight years survi a breast cancer survivor. And when she told me, I honestly, uh, she kind of came to me like, I have something to tell you. And I started to think like, dang, what did I do? Did I forget to do something? And she told me, you know, her, that she was diagnosed. And my mom is the queen of, I'm going to the doctor. So she had early detection. And so um, because I have worked with Lane Bryan from an influencer standpoint, fashion wise, and I happened to mention it to them, and then it was like, this is good, this is perfect. This is, my mom is, we've been shopping here for years. But for telling my mother's story and sharing it from a standpoint of like, as her only child, I had to watch her go through all the treatment. She didn't have to go through chemotherapy, thank God. She was at Sloan Kettering, and the people there and making her feel so like a woman, you know, having her makeup done, having her hair done, and being able to make treatment easier, the best way they can, going through whatever it is they're going through. And my mom is the ever, you know, was that I don't, I'm, I have no more kids, take them, I don't want these things anymore, it's fine, just get me through this, it's help, make me healthy again. So watching her be as strong as she possibly can, I need to share that story. And what really drove me to wanting to work with BCRF is that there was such a realness behind who they were and their brand and their company wanting to understand breast cancer more as opposed to other uh, programs that were out there. So I jumped on it immediately. And I feel, and that after this year, being able to go and listen to doctors, like that made bio class from high school make all the more sense. It took about you know, 15 years, but now I understand why we had to learn what we learned in high school because it, they brought it all around. They understood what they were doing. They were passionate behind what they were doing. And it made my mom, who was a survivor, she understood terms and things that she didn't even think she would, hadn't been through it. Um, so being able to be a part of that was my biggest, was why I wanted to really continue to work with them. And I think, who was it that asked about advocacy? It was you. Um, Things like that, you know, your, your, your customers have someone, their mother, their uncle, it could be them that have, that are going through this. I think storytelling and content creation in general, we all know what social media can do, we know possibly they're going viral and all of that, but storytelling through their videos, the storytelling through the blog posts and things of that nature is what, as a corporation, my personal opinion, you can do. Because these are the people who are already buying your product, using your product, flying with you, whatever the case may be, that is how you advocate for them. If you bring them, bring their mom, bring their sister, bring their father into the story with you, that allows them to see that this is not only the company I want to spend my money with, but I know that the dollars that I'm spending, the donations that I'm giving are directly going to fund people who are up in, was the Chief University went to, that was in the Bronx? I never knew there was a there was a whole college in the middle of the Bronx and no clue. Um, but I to see the work is what made it, what makes it real for the people who are buying your products. And that is the reality of how people function. 
And I think by nature too, real quick, that that's exactly what influencers can help us do is make others feel like an insider. Mm -hmm. um, so that was, I think, really compelling. And even though there may not be conventional influencers like we think of influencers, another thing we did was feature our store associates. We reached out to our field across the country of brick and mortar stores and asked for anyone who had a personal story uh, for themselves or family members, friends, what have you, who were willing to step forward and be featured in, in our social media stories. So again, you got to feel like an insider into the company, not just the, the face of the brand, but the associates who work there every single day, being part of the conversation, being part of the mission. And again, not tr a conventional influencer, but really telling the stories. I love that. Um, I think that there was such an authentic and genuine relationship between Lane Bryant and Shayna. Um, you know, Shayna, you actually created a lot of the content for Lane Bryant. There was a trust there that I think a lot of brands, um, you know, sometimes struggle with influencers because they create the content for the influencers to use. And in turn, it was actually the other way around, which was great. And that just made it that much more authentic and genuine and real to your audience and to Lane Bryant's audience as well, to your shared audiences. Um, Shana, I just want to take a step back. Um, when you um, started working with Lane Bryant, how did you assess that this was the right brand for you? I think, I mean, you have to. I grew up wearing Lane Bryant. I mean, my mom and I were shopping in Lane Bryant for years together. So it was a brand that I had, I literally grew up in. So as I started to do, you know, open up blogging and doing social media and content creation and all of that, Lane Bryant was one of the first brands that ever believed in what I was doing. They were one of the first brands to follow me on Instagram, which I was, you know, when Instagram was still new, it was like, oh my gosh, like this is, this was, that was the mega plus size fashion. It was like, Lane Bryant is following me. Yes, I made it. But I had a relationship with them just on a personal level. Like if, if Lindsay and Heather come to town, like it's, this is not a, you know, Miss Sir, it's Lindsay. Like we speak, we have a conversation. She, they act with my mom all the time, you know? And so they created a relationship with me personally. And then when we're able to talk about what's going on and I can understand not just Lane Bryant that wants to sell clothes to people, but who they are as a person, the history behind who LB was. Um, and Catherine's included because my mom shops there as well. So it was it was a no-brainer for me when they brought the idea to me, would you like to work together? And when my mom was like, sure, let's do it. Because my mom, you know, I'm a mother's child, 100%. Let's just go, you know, <laughs> Thelma Louise off a cliff, let's just do it. Um, she, you know, her, you know, that, that was the excitement for me. And I love to create content. That's what I live to do. And so I was like, let's figure this out. I got camera ready and I planned it and we had this, all of these things that were going on and to see my mother excited to do something, to see Wayne Bryan excited to do something. And it was a two, a two for, for me actually, because I created content that I loved, but for the first time my mom saw what I do for a living. <laughs> Because <laughs> she thought I just posted stuff on like Facebook and like Twitter and Instagram. She's like, okay. But she watched me work. She watched me film. She watched me be creative director. She watched me figure this out and that out and put this there and put that there. And she watched me edit the jars, which is very weird. You watch your mom, your mom watch you edit. It's like, okay, you're like in my space. Can you like move? But she watched me work. And that's like, that made me excited to want to wanna create for Lane Bryant. But the messaging um, behind what they do is what fills my heart every single year. Um, actually, a couple years ago, they did a, a dance class that I was invited to. My mom couldn't go, so I was her ambassador for the day. And I walked into a room of survivors and women who were going through treatment, and nobody looked the same. No one was the same. There were women of color, there were white women, there were young women, there were old women, there were women that were stage one, stage three, some people who were like on the borderline. It was just this mass of women who nobody looked exactly the same. And here we are all together, dancing, sweating, people who couldn't dance, who had no sort of rhythm, women who were like, I'm ready, I'm in Azuma, I'm ready to go. <laughs> it was just this group of women, and only thing they had in common was this. And to see that Lane Bryant and Beast are going to bring them together to have a moment to forget that they were that they were even going for anything. We're gonna to sweat together, we're gonna to look cute together, and we're gonna enjoy this. And stuff like that is why I continue to come back. Okay. What can you share as best practice for brands in the room who would like to integrate influencers into their campaigns? What are some best practices for them? And how does it differ per like platform? So Instagram, Facebook, there's TikTok now. 
there and I was only mess with TikTok. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> 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 My coach had to show me and I was like, this is too much for me. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, I mean, the first thing is you got to assess what your plans are, right? So what content do you want and what content do you need? Because not everybody can do YouTube. Some people are terrible at Instagram. Some people have, are terrible at Facebook. And every platform has a different age group. You know, Facebook is solely, usually, a much older demographic than Instagram. TikTok, I don't even. <laughs> you got to be in high school to understand that. I don't, I don't know. College and others, TikTok. <laughs> but you have to assess what your Instagram needs are. Like and then I think for Instagram, me, what works for me with Lane Bryan was people are going to tell their stories regardless, right? I mean, so it takes a lot of assessing through who is using what, who is speaking about what, hashtags are a thing. So what are influencers writing about when it comes to breast cancer or the people in their lives? People who actually have moms or whomever going through breast cancer are going at some point going to write about it or going to say, my mom is going through this or she went through this. There's ways to look at what influencers are doing. Once you figure it out, okay, this is what we want to do and who we want to go with, now you have to kind of present the idea to them. A lot of times influencers or bloggers like myself, we like a little bit of creative control because we hate relinquishing that. That's hard to do. But if you present the idea of like, this is what we want. We want you to share your story. We want you to help us bring other of our customers who are going through what you're doing. Let them open up. So creating the content, whether it be a Facebook video, a 30-second spot on Facebook or, Facebook or Instagram, which are now the same thing, basically, or if you want to go full on and do a YouTube collaboration and let them just go full force and create like a small doc, like that's an option as well. But allowing the influencers who are really going through something with someone in their lives will bring so many more customers to open up to you. So what's going to happen is they're going to see the video and then they're going to get flooded with the comments and the emails like, oh, my mom's going through that. I went through that. I understand it. Put the messaging in there with the influencer because People like me, we understand it. I watched my mom struggle, okay? But then my mom is a gym rat, so when she was done, as soon as she got clearance to go to the gym, don't call her for nothing, because she's at the gym. That was what it was, and that was my messaging. I put it in, my mom don't care. Like, Zumba's coming up, kickboxing, do not call me, period. And that made people like, that's my mom. I see my mom, that's her. And then now they're sharing their stories. And now they want to go to Lane Bryant because my mom went to Lane Bryant. You know what I'm saying? So assess what you need, find out who can execute that the best, and go from there. It always works, I promise. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so I think you know, taking all of these pieces, looking at this program that you guys built and took this 360 approach, what matters to you most when you're assessing impact? So taking the influencer piece, taking the you know the actual collection sales like what what do you prioritize when you talk about impact um, of your programs I think the first thing we talk about is number one how much are we raising to find a cure for cancer how are we doing our part and that's really the most important thing to us it's not a marketing campaign it is a drive to end cancer for us and we also measure that on the empathy and the connection that we build with our associates and with our customers. Um, I, this gentleman who has had a double mastectomy, his parents went through something. Just because, you know, he also went through cancer, but his parents also went through something. My mom and my sister um, are now cancer free, uh, but I went through something. And I think telling the story and, and showing the impact, Shana went through something, even though her mom has breast cancer, uh, we, we like to, we do a report card, we measure volunteer hours, we want everybody to um, be able to do their part, we don't limit it to anybody, somebody says I want to jump in and help, we let them help. Um, and so most important is how we drive to our commitment to Breast Cancer Research Foundation, and then how do we surpass it? What else can we do um, to up our participation, up our level of um, consciousness all year round, not just in October. Awesome. Um, and just to close out, I would be remiss if I did not ask you about what is on the horizon for 2020. Can you give us all a little sneak peek? Um, you know, you, you're coming up the hills of this great program. I know there's been a lot of analyzing and thinking through what does 2020 look like. So can you share a bit of that for us? Well, you said it earlier. Women don't, and women and men don't just get breast cancer in October. They get it all year round. And for us, we've only done a campaign in October, so in spring will be the first time 
that we will do two more campaigns. So we will send her one campaign around International Women's Day, and then we will send her another campaign around Mother's Day. So those are two brand new uh, for us. The other thing is, um, as odd as it may seem, we cannot do online donations right now. So uh, by spring, we will be able to do that. We'll be able to garner uh, associate customer uh, donations for the Breast Cancer Research Foundation uh, starting in, in spring with our campaign. I think we have a tendency to be really competitive with ourselves, so we always want to do more and more and more every year. And what can we do to make big bigger? Um, so you know, we've got this this plus segment with the Cena uh, retail group as a as a platform with Lane Bryant and with the Catherine's brand. So we're just kind of really looking at, in addition to those authentic moments when we can have an additional presence, uh, raise additional funds at those sort of emotionally maybe strategic times of year. Um, with both brands, so with Lane Bryant and with Catherine's, what more can we do? Um, the online donation piece, I think, is going to be really big. We're looking at maybe some more uh, diverse product strategies. So are there some uh, items that we can lean in really hard with uh, proceeds of sales to, to uh, BCRF? Um, and then I think just really what else is going to be new and exciting for us in the, in the term of uh, social media, storytelling, you know, we raised the bar pretty high this year, so we have to figure out what else we're going to do next year to make it bigger I again. Try. <laughs> so um, I think there are some exciting things that our PR team is working on too, so we're going to come on sort of that front. Um, but yeah, I think we're just really excited about uh, keeping the bar raised higher and higher every year. That's awesome. It, I mean, it's been a, a joy working with your team. Shayna, working with you and your mom this year has been amazing. Um, I actually just want to open this up. Um, we have a, a minute to spare um, for any brands in the room that have any questions um, for our panelists today. First of all, I want to say thank you. Um, I do the marketing for Manic Panic, so this is probably a, a very exciting <laughs> segment for me, and, and good work to you for your partnership. Um, I had sort of a very nuts and bolts question. How much of your social media outreach was um, organic versus paid? So the majority of our campaign was organic. So we worked with influencers like Shayna. We, she wasn't our only influencer, but she was the only one we sent. Um, and then the content that we gathered from all of our associates. So we actually handled that through more of the organic. We didn't really uh, dip into the, to the paid social um, as much. I think it's an opportunity for sure. Um, but the majority of ours, we wanted it to be grassroots. We wanted it to be all about who we are as a brand. And right. We wanted the face of the brand to be we connect with and the, our associates that we have. That's amazing. That, that makes it even more, that's an yeah. important distinction. Thank you. out to our customers um, they are more than happy in fact they're super super engaged in all of our all of our content so it it's a no-brainer for us that you know we've built that relationship we're a brand of care um, and we're a brand of empathy with our customers so um, it's not hard for us to do that we'd rather do it through more organic than through paid um, and and um, that's more that's more of a deeper connection for us to to gather that content and I think, you know, we've got the benefit of having merchandise that we can uh, make a very compelling emotional appeal to our customers with. Um, but just internally, even, everyone from our president down to our hourly store associates, it's uh, 
kind of a all hands on deck type of message. We have leaders that are very passionate about uh, the partnership with BCRF. Um, so a lot of our social media posts, not that we're just trying to sell clothes, but we're also <coughs> trying to continue the message of research is the reason and this is a means to an end with our beautiful merchandise that we had. So we had visually compelling content um, and I think an emotional sort of wear the, wear the mission on your body type of benefit that we were able to um, showcase frequently throughout the campaign. I also think one more thing, uh, we had to make a really hard decision. We were um, in the philanthropy area supporting about four companies, national, four partners nationally. And uh, we were faced with the challenge um, from our brand president who said, I want you guys to figure out how to make a bigger impact with fewer partners. And so we had to, we had to really, really go in and say, all right, what needs the most? What connects the most? And then that shows our customers and our associates that we're standing these partners up in a big way. It's not just October. It's not just Mother's Day. People are diagnosed every day. People are going through different stages every single day. And so we had to, we had to walk away from a couple national partners who we still love. Um, but we, um, we needed to be able to put our resources, our money, and our energy where we were going to make a difference. From an outsider standpoint, um, Lane Bryant or Asina in general has always done campaigns that have always been visually appealing to me as a shopper, first and foremost. And so you're you need throughout the year you see I see other influencers and their moms or women who are the shoppers and their kids and it's like always a theme. So when it came down I for me when I when I watch them it comes down to how they're able to garner that support and stick with that support is because that's always been there um, and they haven't skipped on doing great campaigns throughout the year that really incorporate the people that are already spending their money there. So it's, I, I mean, I guess for me, looking in, it's already easier. That's how I shop it. Like, I, I, if you're a brand that I already have spent money with and do a campaign on breast cancer or AIDS research or whatever, I'm more inclined to say, okay, what are they buying that I could put on my shirt or a pin or something I could wear with them? Because I'm already going to spend the money anyway, but I trust the brand to keep that partnership going. So it just it kind of just flows that way. And for us, I love that you love our campaigns. For us, it's not just a campaign. It's who we are. And that really is the most important thing for us. Well, that is a great, actually, close um, for us, um, you know, to know that this is not just a one-off campaign, but that, you know, this cause is a part of who you guys are. Christina is ingrained in your DNA, um, and it shows outwardly, um, visually, through your campaigns and through your other efforts. So um, thank you, Kathy, Dan, Shayna. It's been a pleasure. Thank you all for